you. Are you there? Let me just move you forward. Are you there, Hugh? Good morning. Uh, uh, morning, Hugh. Let me come and see you at the back there. Okay, and uh, good morning to all of you in Adelaide. I'm really delighted to be with you today. Um, I'm even more delighted by the fact that I didn't have to waste half the day at airports and on airplanes, um, going back to those productivity gains that David was talking about. My only regret is it looks like you're having a pretty good breakfast, which I'm missing out, out on. Can you beam me across a few sausages or something? Uh, Hugh, you're not looking too bad for a you know, virtual sort of guy. <laughs> What's it feel like? I feel like giving you a hug, but I'm not quite sure if you'll be there or not. Uh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll skip that bit, thanks, David. Um. <laughs> hey, Hugh, look, I understand you're going to take us through a bit of technology this morning. Uh, can you just give a little bit, the, the audience here, just a little bit of uh, an insight into what this uh, holographic technology is before I leave the stage here? Yeah, sure. It's a great example of how high-speed networks can create the next dimension of service. So. What it is, is it's a high-definition video signal, um, which is then projected at the far end using some very clever optical projection system that enables that 3D effect to be created and therefore the holographic effect. Great. Well, thanks, Hugh. I'm going to leave you to it. By the way, I just want to stress this technology is not available commercially. This is an example of the power of what the network can do, but it's a great example, and Hugh's just going to take us through a little NextG Networks is going to take you as a business. So there's going to be an ex inexorable trend towards a new future in which the way you run your business and the way you interact with your customers is going to change dramatically. And the th first thing you've got to focus on are those customers. Um, they're going to be at home in what we call connected homes, where they're going to be flat screen TVs around the house. Those flat screen TVs are going to deliver entertainment on demand, but they're also going to deliver telepresence. So they're going to deliver high definition video interactions between people and those, that's going to change the way customers behave and expect to behave. They're also, in the world of global warming, going to be um, delivering uh, sensors across the network. So the houses and the people in them are going to be wired up, um, censored up. So we can measure the use of energy and control that use of energy. We can measure people's bio, um, bio rhythms and bio effects so that we can actually deliver a new form of healthcare. To do that, we've got to power it through new broadband networks um, because these multiple screens in the home are going to change the requirements on the network delivery mechanism. So we're going to need a next generation of fixed access broadband network. At the same time, as David's pointed out, people are going to be mobile. And the way in which we're mobile is also going to evolve. So today we walk around with mobile phones, which are small screen devices. In the future, we're going to have wearable displays that turn those mobile phones from small screen devices into large screen devices with screens being directly projected onto your retina. And to drive those new mobile networks, we're going to need to keep on evolving our mobile technology. So we're already um, planning on delivering 21 megabits per second peak rate at the end of this year, and we'll keep on driving that up in the future to 42 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second, and ultimately with fourth generation systems to a gigabit per second. Um, all of this is going to be powered via an IP network. The IP networks are becoming the infrastructure of the future, and that's what we've delivered with our next IP um, network today. The important thing about these IP networks is during the dot-com boom, the sort of impression was gained that any kid with a keyboard could build an IP network. And to a certain extent, that's true. But the real issue is, could they deliver them with carrier grade, five nines reliability or six minutes, six, five minutes of outage per year? Those are the key issues. Once we've put this infrastructure together, the next thing that's going to happen is the way in which we control the services on that network. So, Think of yourself as being able to move around from fixed to mobile environments, from high speed to lower speed, depending on where you are and what you're doing, in a totally seamless way. Um, and the network automatically so sorts out what's best for you in terms of network speed, your budget, quality of service. It's what the industry calls always best connected. And what's more, you just need one set of credentials, one identity, that takes you across all those networks in a seamless way. That's the infrastructure layer, the, the connection control that we're building on top of that. And then finally, 
that the applications that you as a business are running, that you're going to want to incorporate all sorts of details that we are carrying about our customers, where they are, what their preferences are, the sort of information that they routinely seek, so that you can deliver a next generation set of applications. Um, applications that enable you to interact with your customers on their terms. If they want personalization and be able to see a person, they can do that via telepresence from their homes into your offices. If they want to be contacted in their time according to their needs, you can do that because you have enough detail to know where they are, what their state is, and whether they're receptive to a contact at that point. Those are the type of applications, those customer contact ap applications that David talked about earlier, that are going to transform dramatically and transform the way you run your business. So that's th the picture of the future we're heading towards. And in 10 years' time, you've got to assume the way in which you're running your businesses is going to have changed absolutely dramatically because of those factors. But the one thing you've still got to bear in mind is that if you're running your business on this infrastructure, you've got to worry about its reliability and you've got to worry about its security. Um, the world is a, a threatening place out there and security issues are going to be with us from now and into the future and they need to be managed. At the same time, things do go wrong. You need to have enough infrastructure to ensure that when one route fails, it automatically and transparently switches over to the next route. So the network on which you rely on for your business is going to be critical to you. And I think with that sobering thought, I will hand back to David uh, for the rest of this presentation. Thanks, Hugh. I quite like this new technology. I don't even have to be in the same room as you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't so, realize I was that repulsive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so look, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's the first hologram in Australia real time. Thanks, Hugh. Thanks, David.